Hey everyone, this is our new Model 3 Performance Highland Edition and it's a car from the United States so it's got the powerful battery and like we do with all of our new cars we're gonna put on the dyno and see how much power it makes so let's load it up and we're gonna do it at every stage of the battery as well like we've done in the past so we'll do 30, 40, 50, 60 all the way up to 100 and then when we get to the top we're also gonna test it from a cold battery to a hot battery so you can get an idea of where you get the most power and for you drag racers, you can kind of really narrow in on that, that sweet spot. Yeah, this thing just makes a ton of power up top. We've done 30, 40, 50, and 60% now, and it gains about 15 horsepower every pull, similar to how the 2018 cars are. Um, the real difference is just how that power carries and just doesn't fall off, which makes these cars awesome on road courses, where compared to Porsches and other faster cars, we would just get eaten up in the straightaways. So while it's making a lot more power, it also heats the battery faster because higher power means way more heat. Now we're going to do 70, 80, 90, and 100 percent, and we're also going to do a test right at the end where we superheat the battery and see how much power a hot battery gets us compared to just kind of this 35 degrees Celsius. All right, so we were looking through the data, and I noticed that the power was lower than it should be with the Highland. Um, we know from track data that the Highland draws about 1,350 amps uh, at full power, and we were seeing on the dyno the same amount of current draw that we would see with a normal performance. Uh, non-Highland. So uh, we wanted to try two different methods with the wheel speed sensor unplugged and in dyno test mode. And the interesting thing we found was that even in dyno test mode the power output is exactly the same as with the wheel speed sensor unplugged but you get a different torque split distribution so we get a lot more rear bias in dyno test mode and the overall behavior of the car was also really strange. Uh, but interestingly it won't give you the full power on the dyno so tip for any of you guys running series out there that are, you know, dyno testing cars like Grid Life, this car will lie to you on the dyno and be at a lot lower power than what you'll see on the racetrack. So we'll have a graphic overlay that should be like right here right now, where we'll show you the actual power that a dyno would read, give or take, based on the, the data that we've recorded and the dyno tests that we have done. So we can kind of offset that by the 10 or so percent that this car is more powerful. Yep.
Okay, so the difference that we saw between 30% our starting pull with around, I don't have the data in front of me, but around 35 degrees Celsius starting temperature to 98% deg uh, with a hot battery, so starting about 47 degrees Celsius, we have a 100 wheel horsepower difference, give or take and even larger than that at the end of the run uh, when the, the low state of charge battery is starting to fall off even more. So, I mean, that's like a 25% difference in power um, between the full, you know, optimal and what you'd get if you're just driving around town with a, with a low battery. So, if you feel the need to street race somebody and it's gonna be a bit close, just make sure you got the battery charged up and warm because, you know, we don't want the Teslas losing. But also don't do that. <laughs> okay guys, so like our other dyno video, you can see that the car keeps making more and more power the higher the state of charge is. And the closer you get to 100, the less each 10% makes. Um, and we did find that uh, the pulls, when we were just doing our ambient testing, the starting temperature was 38 degrees Celsius, give or take. And the hot battery test was 48 degrees starting. So we gained about 10 horsepower from that hot test. So you can kind of use a rule of thumb of one horsepower per degree Celsius uh, of battery temperature. So you definitely want to have the battery hot and that'll be an even bigger difference if you're out on really cold weather and the car's you know, five or 10 degrees Celsius battery, it's gonna be at a much lower power uh, compared to 40 or 50 degrees Celsius. So drag racing, start all the way hot. Road course, try and do your hot lap around 35 start to 50 at the end of the run. For drag racers, how do they get it hot? Good question. So I would recommend charging to like 99, then navigating a supercharger that will um, start the car heating itself. And you'll hear pumps and the heat pump turning on and you'll hear it like taper down and slow down once it's the coolant has gotten hot enough. So leave it there for five or 10 minutes. That'll fully bring the battery up to temperature and then turn it out of that mode and then the best thing to do is put it in track mode for like one or two minutes after, and that'll cool the coolant back down and make sure the inverters are nice and cool mm. while the battery's still hot. Uh, we couldn't do that because we had a wheel speed sensor unplugged for these dyno poles. But um, yeah, that's kind of like the hot setup to get that, um, the battery temperature dialed in. Now, if you're wondering how can I know what my battery temperature is exactly, well, you can just buy a Motec, which is definitely... It's like 20 bucks. It's like, yeah, $15, <laughs> yeah, so highly recommend it. <laughs> Okay, so closing remarks, or more of a question, do we all need to sell our 2018 performance and buy a brand new one? Yeah, so that's the thing, right? This car has so much more power at higher RPM. You get that extra 100 horsepower that carries. So on paper, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's the same battery. Okay. So a car that could go two laps on a shorter track, or three laps even, can now do one attack lap at full power. Right. That's why our CPC is good because you can set the power level to what you want. You can then have the push to pass. So you can kind of practice at 250, 300 kilowatts, then use a push to pass when you feel comfortable and you've gotten, you know, a, a good feel for the track and for the, for the car. So while this is awesome, it's actually kind of more frustrating because now the car is even more uh, of like a sprinter, you know, it can do like one lap if everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, you do need to manage that temperature even more than before. Um, so we kind of all talked about how as the EVs evolve, they'll be able to run for longer and longer. But actually Tesla was pretty lazy with this one. They just gave a bit more power and um, left left the battery and all the thermal stuff in there that, that, that overheats right away. So uh, shame. Come on, Tesla. There's Just leaving room for the next one, you know, it's like an iPhone. You know? <laughs> I guess they want the Model S to be better and, and this is all you know, cost conscious and whatnot. But uh, there's a big room for improvement there. And when you compare it to like an 800 volt platform vehicle, like an Ionic or something, this car is kind of showing its age. It's still kind of that 2018 architecture that they're just working a bit harder.